Okay. So please join me in um, thanking Jill Senior. She is the manager of solid waste for the town of Stonington today. And she's going to be telling us today about uh, what they've done to reduce um, solid waste in, in the town. And we're really curious also to hear any advice that you have for us when we try to convince other towns <laughs> to uh, do what you've done. So thank you very much. And we'll turn it to you. Um, and again, as I mentioned, um, this is my first time sharing a screen through a little presentation. So um, bear with me as I try to get through this without my IT girl here. Um, but um, I put together a little bit um, just to kind of give you a summary of what we're doing here in Stonington. Um, I think we have a lot of innovative programs um, that we've started in the past and then now with our food collection program um, going in the future. Um, so you want me to try to uh, pull this up here and we'll kind of go through it. Okay. Can you see my screen? Nope. <laughs> oh, <not yet. laughs> okay. Joanne, do I need to do something? No, I think it's me. So oh, you have to be able to sh it has to say sh um, share s screen share down at the bottom. Oh, there we go. Oh, there, there you go. go. Awesome. Okay. okay. <clears throat> All right. So you can see my full screen. Yes. Yep. Great. All right. So. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so Stonington, Connecticut, what do we have? We have pay as you throw, we have single stream recycling, textile recycling, organics composting, and transfer station. Um, so we're very proud um, to be a leader uh, by implementing new and effective waste diversion and reduction programs. We work in conjunction with SCARA, the Southeastern Connecticut Regional Resource Recovery Authority, and it is our goal to implement long-term solutions for municipalities for solid waste recycling and disposal management issues. Um, you know, a minute ago, you were talking about that seawall and decades ago, Connecticut could handle their own trash, but we throw away more and more and we've become what a lot of us refer to as a disposable society. Mm -hmm. um, so just to throw a couple of facts out there of what we're dealing with here in Connecticut, um, according to Connecticut Deep, Connecticut generates approximately three and a half million tons of municipal solid waste a year. Um, and of those three and a half million tons, 1.2 million are recycled, but 2.3 million gets incinerated at our five waste to energy facilities in the state and 20% is exported to out-of-state landfills in New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. Um, I know I found it surprising that we're still shipping to out-of-state landfills. And I, I personally don't feel that we should be sending our trash out of state to be buried in someone else's backyard. So this has become really important that we need to talk about the trash. How can we produce less and dispose of it more responsibly? So in 1993, which seems decades and decades ago now, um, Stonington ele elected to implement our yellow bag program. This was in response to the cap and closure of our landfill. And it did get a lot of pushback in the beginning. In fact, the town was sued. Um, however, um, it went through the legal process and it was determined that the town had the authority to mandate the use of official bags and we've been using them for 30 years. Are there still people that complain about their program? There are, but I think a lot of them are misinformed and feel that their taxes already pay for trash disposal. And now we're, they call it an additional tax, a hidden tax because they have to pay for bags. So I think the more that we can educate these people on what the program covers and that it's not coming out of their taxes. I think more and more people are on board. Um, as you can see from the graph, uh, the Connecticut average um, person generates 790 pounds 
of trash and the Connecticut resident, excuse me, 740 pounds annually and Stonington generates 390. Um, and that is directly because of pay as you throw. I mean, if you have to go out and, and buy a yellow bag and put more trash in it, you're spending more money. But if you take those cereal boxes and earn everything out and you condense it and you're recycling more, you can get away with buying fewer bags. And that makes our recycling rates go up and our municipal trash go down. So it it works. Um, it's reduce our waste here in Stonington between 40 and 55%. Um, and it's still going strong. So we have really good numbers on this and it, it wasn't easy implementing it. Um, sometimes it's still a challenge, but the facts are there and the program works. Um, we did not have a problem with illegal dumping or trash accumulation at people's homes. Um, it just didn't happen. Um, so I think that was another concern when the program was first implemented, but it's just not something that we're seeing. So it's, we don't have to worry about that. Um, our revenue from our, the sale of the yellow bags and our tipping fees and recycling fees that we gain revenue from the transfer station pays 70% of our budgetary expenses for our solid waste department. Um, so it's it's pretty good that we have that much revenue to um, carry through the programs that we like to see here. This is a good, Stonington has 7,666 households that annually generate 12,000 tons of household solid waste in addition to 5,000 tons of recycling. Um, we strongly promote our recycling programs, such as single stream, our metal recycling, our textile recycling, and now we have our green bag organics. Um, all of these programs help reduce our tonnage well over 8,000 tons per year. Um, so this, it's working for us. We send a lot less to the incinerator up in Lisbon. Um, our textile program um, was rather easy to set up. We work with a company called Simple Recycling and F.E. Crandall Disposal. They handle the town's um, curbside residential pickup. Um, the town is able to provide our pink bag program to our residents at no cost to the town or to the residents. The hauler is paid a nominal fee from Simple Recycling just for the collection of the pink bags. Um, simple Recycling weighs out the weight. They go to his transfer station um, and the revenue that he gets from that pays for his nominal fee to pick up the bags. We've been doing the pink bag program since 2020 and we've diverted 30 tons of textiles from going to the incinerator. A little note about our green bag program, the 240 tons is an estimate. We've started the green bag program on January 23rd. And right now we've got a couple months in, we're doing about 20 tons a month and it's a new program. So we're pretty excited with those early results. Um, our green bag program was made possible through a grant from the Sustainable Materials Management Grant Award. Um, the Connecticut State Deep considered Stonington to be a prime candidate for the curbside organic scrap collection program. Um, we were able to offer the residents a curbside program where they would put a green bag out once a week with their pink bags, their yellow bags, and their recycling. Um, it is collected by our residential hauler, and he transports the waste to Quantum Biopower in Southington, Connecticut, where it's anaerobically digested to create renewable energy and compost. Um, again, we've diverted over 40 tons of food um, from the inception of the pilot program. Um, so I think the early results on that is excellent. Um, we did have residents concern about um, rodents and smell. 
actually, I think we had more concern before the program started. Um, we had a, a lot of people call up. Um, I, some people said that I was bringing in every rat from the tri-state area. <laughs> Um, but it's now that the program has started, those phone calls have fallen off. Um, so I really haven't heard too much about animals getting into the bags or the pails. I think the residents themselves are um, doing what they can to prevent that. Um, nobody wants a bunch of food litter on their lawn first thing in the morning. So I think they're really working hard to um, make sure that the animals don't get into that. As for the smell, um, we did have a couple of little um, infomercials put out there. Simple things, uh, sprinkling a little baking soda in your pail. Um, soiled paper towels can go in the bucket as well, and that absorbs some of the liquid, therefore it, it doesn't um, decompose as quickly. Um, some A woman called me up and said that she was putting a dryer sheet underneath her green bag, and the dryer sheet, um, prevented a lot of the smell. Um, those are just a couple of ideas um, that were out there. And just by keeping the container in a cooler, um, dark area, um, it makes it decompose slower. So usually you can get it out for your weekly pickup before it really starts to um, leak out any odors or anything. And our bucket did have a lid too. It does have a lid, um, which the residents, I think they appreciated that, that we gave them a bucket with a a good lid on it. Um, so we also, we did put a dumpster at the transfer station. Um, it's just dedicated for food scraps. Um, so if somebody did fill up their bag quickly or it did start to, to smell, they could wouldn't have to wait till the residential pickup and they could bring it to the transfer station. Um, speaking of our transfer station, um, we are open six days a week. Uh, we have a knowledgeable, helpful staff. My light goes off if I don't move. <laughs> um, our transfer station, uh, we offer residents um, a lot of additional resources to recycle their household waste. Um, if you're looking at the items up on the screen, um, we take in an awful lot of things that a lot of other transfer stations don't. Uh, we are lucky we get a lot of subsidies from SCARA. We get subsidies from the Extended Producer Responsibility Program. And these programs enable the town to offer additional recycling at no charge to the residents. And if you added up all the items that are on the screen from the paint to the electronic waste to the oil and antifreeze, um, all told, the Stonington Transfer Station properly diverted and recycled approximately 100 tons of waste from being improperly disposed of or just sent up to the incinerator. And that's in one fiscal year. Um, so that's, we're proud of that statistic that we're really taking care of that much. Um, the mattresses, the tires, and the paint are all part of the Extended Producer Responsibility Program. Um, so they are able to dispose of those uh, for free. In addition to that, um, being part of SCARA, um, they also fund and administer a collection program for household hazardous waste. It's held through April through November. Uh, these nine annual collections um, change location each month, but they're free to any participating community within SCARA. Um, we had ours here in Stonington on April 1st, and I will tell you it was in the pouring, pouring rain that we stood out there and we served 500 vehicles. Um, so 341 of those vehicles disposed of hazardous waste. Um, I think this is important, especially down here on the shoreline. Um, you get a lot of people leaving hazardous waste in places where it shouldn't be. So if you give people the opportunity to drop off hazardous waste by just driving up and emptying out their vehicles, um, it's truly a safe, effective way to dispose of it. We're all aware, this is, this is the Lisbon. I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of the Lisbon incinerator, but there it is. 
Um, we're all aware that Connecticut is in a waste crisis, and I think it's very important that we make a commitment to ourselves and to our communities that we do our part to reduce, reuse, and recycle. And I always think after that picture, it's always nice to say that each one of us can make a difference and together we make a change. Um, so I, I think that's where we are. I think we need to all get together and make a difference. Um, I think we have a lot of things coming across the board that we need to pay attention to um, with response to the governor's um, plans and how it is going to affect our communities. So that's it for that. And uh, we have some, I'll stop this. Okay. All right. Um, so that worked. <laughs> um, any any questions about anything that I, I talked about? What can I give you some more information on? <clears throat> um, I'd like more information about the textiles. Me too. Um, is it all reusable or is it stuff that's so worn out that no one could use it? Um, first of all, Stonington strongly promotes giving um, things that are reusable to our community thrift stores. Yeah. We have a, the Stonington Como thrift store here. We have one in Westerly, the Johnny Cake Center, and things that are in good condition. Mm -hmm. We strongly promote that's the first option. Priority should go so it could be reused. Mm -hmm. Things that are in the, the pink bags, um, they are sorted by simple recycling things that they still feel are reusable um, go to places like Save Right, Savers, um, and Goodwill, um, and the rest are shredded and made into other, other products. Um, so that they, they do everything. We have pencils here that are made from reclaimed denim. Mm -hmm. um, so it's wow, amazing. They make everything from automobile parts to pencils to, um, to many things. It's just not making other clothing it's making products from it so um, for, the, for the recycling would they take only organic things like cotton and linen and wool or do they take polyester and nylon and yep they take everything they'll take they'll take a vinyl pocketbook um so you mm. can throw that in there as well they'll take shoes and flip-flops and they have resources um to uh recycle those items so they can fill up those pink bags with all those items and put it right out on the curb. There's some companies that are making um, insulation out of um, mm. denim. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So I do. I, I have a oh, question. Go ahead, Marian. Um, I'm up, I'm up at my daughter's house and I just ran into this room because there's kids everywhere. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't know where to sit where it's, a good situation here but uh you had mentioned crandall mm -hmm. now we uh ledgered has those for regular pickup of of uh recyclables and uh just trash and garbage and you had but you had a more specific item that you were talking about that they were picking up or did i misunderstand you um frank crandall is our dedicated hauler for all residential trash and our new food waste collection program so Frank does our recyclables, he does our yellow bags, he does our pink bags, and now he does our green bags. So, okay. yep, so he picks up everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When the truck comes by, did they pick up, does one truck pick up only pink bags and another truck pick up only green bags? Or? Um, Frank's trucks travel in tandem. He does have a dedicated recycling truck and a yellow bag truck. Um, he now has the dedicated food waste truck. Uh, the pink bags are piled because they're not as um, prolific as our yellow bags. They're piled on the truck. Um, mm -hmm. And then when they go back to the transfer station or they have another truck loop around if they get too full. Um, so they'll put they'll put those on. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he has the two sets of trucks when well, actually now the third with the green food waste bags. Um, and have you done any kind of analysis about 
what the balance is between the gasoline used to transport the organic waste for biofuel um, versus right. so, biofuel. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I, right. So we haven't yet, This we're still in the first couple of months here of the program. Obviously, that's a concern when you're transporting waste to the other side of the state. Um, I, I guess you can say that we're offsetting some of that cost because the waste is being used to generate renewable electricity and compost. Um, so you could offset some of the transportation costs because you are making that renewable energy. Um, but this is why SCARA is looking at developing a regional transfer station. Um, this is something that we as members all feel that we would need to do to continue the program. We wouldn't be making renewable energy, but what we, we would be doing is possibly making a baggable compost. Um, we would bring all our food waste. It wouldn't cost the $65 a ton that we are charged to incinerate it. And of course, we wouldn't be having the transportation costs to deliver it to the other side of the state. So I, I think it's important in the next very near future that we create some kind of regional transfer station to make this program grow and continue. Joel, and do, do, you think do, you, do you know what the progress is on that? Last we heard that uh, Scara was looking for land to do. Yep. We, we are still looking for land. We have the, um, I know um, Dave Aldridge has a couple of places that he's been looking into. Okay. Um, there's a lot of logistics that go around where it is um, and what's around it. Um, a lot of people say transfer station and they start to panic, you, you know, so yeah. it's not in my backyard, but right. um, <laughs> but I think it's because it's food waste um, and because of the plan that they would have um, set, I, I think it's something that we could see happen very soon. Oh, great. Thank you. And is there a way that um, folks in other towns could be advocates yeah. <laughs> for that? Because obviously... Scara is going to want to know that the other towns are going to be enforcing a similar sort of program. It, it otherwise, it's you know doesn't make any sense, right? So, and, and so. I I think it would be something that we could easily set up. Um, you know, I I think depending there's a lot of things like depending on how much money we save per ton from going to the incinerator or or Southington, if we took that money and I'm just speaking off the cuff, but if municipalities were provided a green bag for themselves and residents were asked to put the green bag out and that was brought to our transfer station, even if we did have that expense, would be, be saving money because we're not paying the incineration costs and the transportation costs. Um, and, you know, as mis municipalities, we're all paying that $65 a ton. You right. know what I mean? So um, we would be saving money there, I would think. So it, there's a lot of little things that we need to iron out in doing this. But I think in the in the big picture, we'd be saving money. And we always have to weigh the environmental concern, too. I mean, waste to energy plants are are better than a landfill, um, but you still have the problem of ash. Mm -hmm. um, they generate ash and that's a problem. So um, I, I think that's another way of we'd, we'd have to start looking at things too. Jill, have you been asked to come to um, speak to the councils of other towns? Not, not yet. I'm still new. <laughs> well, it seems like this was very brief. Um, it wasn't even a half an hour, and I'm sure you could figure out ways to go through it faster. And it it seems to me that, you know, we could all figure out a way to impress upon our councils to put this on the agenda 
on their various agendas and say, you know, come and listen to this. Uh, yeah, this I, 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 as I said, I think the Pay As You program really works to reduce the amount of trash. It's it's a, a proven success. Um, so if we can get a lot of, you know, you get the political issues, you get the kickbacks from the residents that, that don't want to do it. Um, right. But I, I think it's time... I think we're finally at the point where we can't just keep discussing it. I, I think we have to tell the towns now, it's, maybe it's not the best option during a political year, you know, to tell everybody they're going to have to be paying for yellow bags or whatever, you know. But I, I think we're at that point now where you're going to see it somewhere, even if you're not paying for um, unit based pricing your taxes are going to go up. Right. It's there somewhere. You're you're paying for it. Um so I I think a lot of municipalities need to look at this. And as I said, our transfer station and our unit based pricing and our other um ideas I, it really makes a difference. Um so if we can get that out there and and get other towns on board, I think that's where we have to go. Cindy, you have a question? Yes, and I think Kim had a question oh, um, okay. as well. Kim, would you like to go first? Well, it might be the same question. Cindy and I both live in New London. And a few years ago, the pay as you throw uh, concept was brought up and it was really shot down by the residents of New London for a lot of those same reasons that have been suggested. So my question is, what's different about the residents of Stonington? And I kind of have an idea that it has to do with, <laughs> with well, let's being not forget, a little more well-to-do. Let's not forget that the town of Stonington was sued. <laughs> so, I mean, it, there, it was a big fight. It's just that that fight took place 30 years ago. Um, so we've been doing the program so long um, that I think everybody's kind of gotten used to it and said, this is the way it is. Um, I think one of the things I see as I, I sit on the the board at SCARA, I, I think a lot of everyone's trying, we're all getting on the same track. We, we all know that things need to change. So I, I think those managers and directors of you know New London, Norwich, Ledger, I, I think we all realize that we need to start making a difference. And I think those people are going to start talking to their municipal leaders and telling them that, you know, this is this is what's happening. This is what you have to do. North Stonington is purchasing a roll off truck so they can start transporting their trash at a lower rate than it was being picked up. I think all these little things are starting to um, to add up. And I think that's what we have to do is just keep hammering away at them. I'd like to uh, continue this line of questioning. I actually have two questions in my dog's list because he needs a walk. But anyways, <laughs> um, I applaud your success. And I, I, as Kim mentioned, I live in New London. We do have a lot of low income and rental units in New London. And um, I think that was part of the problem when the the pay the payer bags was introduced as a topic and very quickly shot down at the council meetings. Um, so I'm curious um, how did you um, how did your town, implement this program among rental properties. And also we have businesses, we have restaurants and um, Mitchell College, Connecticut College, the hospital, other businesses. I'm curious it, who's excluded from participating in the pay as you cost program. It's And thank you very much. Sure thing. Um, it's residents are the participants in the yellow bag program. Um, our businesses is it's volume based. 
Um, so they, it's all built through the town. Willimantic Waste handles all the businesses um, and it's volume based for the business. The amount of trash they generate, that's the amount that they're responsible for. Um, I think that was another good way that they set it up, that it separated the businesses and they're directly charged only for the amount of trash that they generate. Um, with, I'm not sure, the, the first part of your question was just how did we start it or how did we present it to the residents? No, as, as far as getting participation from renters, my speculation would be that a landlord, especially if they are non-residential landlords of properties in your town, um, how to enforce um, the participation in purchasing the yellow bags for tenants of rental properties and um, what do you do? Who handles if the um they don't in, cooperate in in New London? Who handles the the trash for tenement houses? Is it is it the same for everybody? Well, that's a good question, and I do not know the answer. Yeah, because I'm not in, sure about that. If it, whether that's yeah. part of the same program either. And um, in our neighborhoods, um, we have homes in residential neighborhoods that have been split up into multifamily dwellings, mm -hmm. which are then rental properties, even though from the curb, the dwelling might have been at one time a single family home. And we have that here in Stonington. Um, we have quite a few large houses that have been subdivided and now have two or three uh, rental units. Um, we were very lucky when we did our bucket distribution and we would only put one bucket. Um, we got a lot of calls from people saying, hey, I live in the back of that house and we want a bucket too. Um, so I don't think we had the problem as, as much um, when it came to our food waste. And it's the same kind of thing as, as the yellow bag program. Um, everybody knows... We, I will say we're having some concern with our short-term rentals, um, our Airbnbs that a lot of, we've had some people come into the town and purchase houses. They don't live here, they live elsewhere. We have renters come in, they're putting their garbage in black bags and leaving it out on the curb. Mm. We have to contact the homeowners. So we go to the assessor's office, we find out who owns the property and we send them a nice little letter telling them that they need to provide yellow bags, either that or tell their renters that their trash will not be picked up. Um, of the handful of people that we've had to contact so far, the response has been okay. That you know they've they've been doing that. They're leaving yellow bags in their in their rental properties. Um, again, I think Stonington's a little bit different. Um, I'm I'm not sure about you know, a more congested like New London or something like that of how you would get all the people to to um to do the yellow bag program. Well in Vermont at my timeshare, there's maybe five hundred apartments in the timeshare. They just have three dumpsters out and <clears throat> guests of the system know that they put trash in this one, recyclables in this one and composting in, in the last one. Yeah. So people just sort it themselves in any color bag that they want, but it goes into the correct dumpster. Right. That's sort of a European system, you know, where people are more community oriented and they're willing to walk a block or two to recycle their bottles and stuff well, like that. And that, and that's true. I have people that come in um, and say over in Europe and, and everything, yeah. um, we are... Uh, assistant finance director is from Czechoslovakia and she was like you know we have seven garbage cans <laughs> you know even the glass is separate. green glass white from glass, glass. Yeah. exactly you know yeah. so she's right. like you know I still can't get used to throwing everything in one pail you know um but it's it's a star you know and it's this isn't going to be easy but I think if we all do our due diligence and we and we 
we push it and we keep on it. And, you know, the state is going to have to realize that they might have to help some of these, you know, locations. And, and I really think it's important to have the schools and the colleges participate yes. because it's part of their education. Yes. Yep. And if we can start them with these habits, it will. And it's, it's take... difficult. I mean, we. It's not the kids understand it. Well, my grandchildren get it. They do. All the the kids do. Kids do. Yeah. But when you go and you talk to the administration and they tell you we don't have any more money for another dumpster, we don't have any more money for this, that, and the other, then they say to you, "We want to do food compost recycling because look at the food we're throwing away in our kitchen." And then they look at you and say, but we have no money and no funds and no resources to do it. Money talk. I, money don't, know talks. To, I don't know how to help those people. <laughs> because they right. are paying for the, they are paying for the right. trash disposal. It, right. They're paying for it. Anyway. They're already paying for it. It's not going to make any difference. That's actually in the town of New London, they don't. The universities and the hospital are waived. And it's been that way for many, many years. And that is a huge burden for homeowners and taxpayers. Like, But that know, should give you the authority and, to say, if you want us to pick it up, you've got to have it separated this way. Right. It would have to be passed yeah. by voters. It would, it would um, but... Kim would know better than I as a long-term resident, but... Um, this is something I don't know if it's in the town charter that these universities, uh, the Coast Guard Academy and the hospital, there's something about their their charter or their agreement with the city that they don't pay a penny for trash disposal. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I'm not sure that's, no, I'm not sure that's true. I know for Mitchell, they had their own private company. That's what I would imagine. They probably are are expected to To engage in pilots, which is, which is payments in lieu of taxes. So they, they're obligated in, in, you know, for example, a hospital is a great example. Um, College, maybe not the best example, but um, where they provide um, either literally payments, cash payments or services to the community in lieu of being taxed. But I, I would be really stunned if they don't have to pay for their own trash pickup. Well, I hope I'm wrong, but I, um, I might have misinterpreted something that I heard at a city council meeting or read in the paper. And um, I know that so they're that, tax that may free. be I know they're tax free. Yeah. yeah. Tax exempt. Yeah. yeah. But it's, tax it's exempt. true, Vivian, that there is some kind of an extra payment. Right. And I, my understanding was that Mitchell was much more um, willing to do that than Con College was, which. <laughs> which is really. Come on, because Mitchell yeah. doesn't have any money and Con College has plenty. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I definitely know that uh, Mitchell had a private company that pick up their trash. I mean, there's, they have to generate trash. Right. Well, right. that is good news. And my apologies for m- any any misinformation on my part is not intentional. So, But yeah. it may be true, Cindy, that, that whatever... Um, trash plan the residents of new london need to abide by doesn't have to be the same as these companies and other entities so that probably is different at right. one point con college had instituted a pretty robust composting pro- program with their food service and i contacted somebody to talk about it and she said yeah it's gone now so that oh, was kind of disappointing wow yeah. i wonder why that's I mean, shocking, especially since the arboretum is right. You get it's a perfect, a huge, yeah, perfect place it, to to create a huge like compost a, right. operation. Like a, yeah, it seems like a completely seems, synergistic um, type of operation right. that 
you wouldn't be trucking in and out your yeah one would your think, waste but... and your mulch but how long ago was that kim well i know it was during the time i was working at mitchell um but the person who i who i contacted said now they send it to a farm and pigs eat it so that's okay. one way to get rid of it yeah <laughs> that's one way to get rid of it yeah that was not... an option when we first started talking about what we're going to do with it <laughs> We did discuss the pig farm. <laughs> so I have a question for you on um, EPR for packaging. What what do you think the state legislature, will they, I, I've heard some of the testimony pro and con, and what is your take on that, whether we can get it through or not? Um, I, I'm... Mm. I um, don't know if we can get it through or not. Um, we we strongly support it. Um, extended producer responsibility. Um, you know that's how we first got the mattresses, the tires, and the paints, and our e-waste. Um, you know one of the things that we're seeing um, that's really growing around here is cardboard boxes. Mm. The amount of Amazon cardboard oh, yeah. boxes is ridiculous. Um, so if I'm sending a truck, you know, one additional trip a week, just because I've got so much cardboard in our bin, mm. um, to be getting a little bit of, you know, stipend or reimbursement back because of that, I think that works. Um, I extended producer responsibility works for a lot of programs. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that is something that I, I hope that part goes through. Mm -hmm. um, that would that would be beneficial to the town. Yeah. It sounded like it was quite a large percentage of the solid waste. I don't remember what I'd like twenty percent maybe. Um wow. of Perfect. the total in Connecticut was um packaging. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know, so and and that's where we become it becomes a problem because a lot of times it's People don't crush their cardboard boxes, so they're throwing them in the back of the truck that fills up yeah. with air, you know, so more trips are needed because people aren't taking the time to flatten them and because they have so many of them. Sometimes you drive by somebody's house, there's eight cardboard boxes all stacked on top of each other, you know, so, um, so yeah, I, I think there's a lot of good in, in that portion of the, of the bill. Of the bill. Okay. So Jill, I have a question for you. <laughs> Um, if a town is considering getting on this wagon um, <laughs> that you frontiered and pioneered here, um, what, two things, what does it take to get support from the state? Like, what did it take for you to get support from the state? And um, do you have any tips for people in terms of implementing this and getting the word out? Um, the most effective ways to get the word out to people to participate? Um, well, first first of all, um, this was probably three years in the making. Um, my, uh, the previous director, John Petty Place, um, I worked for him for two years before he retired. He was a strong advocate in this program and he did everything he could um, to try to push it through. Uh, it did help that we had unit-based pricing um, because we were already taking the recyclables out. We would had the yellow bag program. Um, when we added textiles, it was the next logical step of what we could take out of Stonington's waste was the heavy wet food. Um, so I think he pushed it home with the state representatives and said, we're ready. This is what we need to do. Um, I, I wouldn't say fast forward three years. <laughs> it was a <laughs> crawl. <laughs> the dragging. <laughs> um, but we finally got there. And um, when we said that we were to be a recipient of the grant, um, even when we heard that we were a recipient of the grant, I think it probably took um, almost a year 
that, that last year was, you know, we, we were probably going to get it and it just took quite some time. It was going to start. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to start in the <clears> summer. <throat> then it was the fall. And of course we didn't start it until the end of January. Um, so it, it takes time to get things through the deep. Um, there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of um, hoops that you have to jump through. I, I, I won't sugarcoat it. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a process. Um, I think you you can't give up. You have to keep pounding on them and, and saying, you know, I want to make a difference. We want to do this program. Um, and as I said, we're, we're in we're in a crisis and this is going to be a problem. Um, Stonington's fairly lucky. We've got about um, seven more years before our contract at Lisbon runs up. But once that happens, we're going to see rates through the roof. Um, so if we can do whatever we can to lessen the blow, then I, I think that's what we have to look at. And I think that's what we need to tell the state. I think that's what we need to tell other municipalities. I think also, um, maybe I'm overly optimistic, but I think since there's a model, an example in Southeastern Connecticut, um, you know, where it did take three years, I would hope that, you know, making presentations, bringing Jill to various town councils to make presentations would hopefully grease the wheels. I hope that you'll present um, even, ri even written documents if you can't get to every town, but especially a financial analysis yeah. of the benefits of this, because I think money talks. Yeah. It's really the only universal language that we have. Yeah. I think if we can show that this is going to save money, that's all they care about. They don't care about the environment. They don't care about anything else. Um, sad but true. Yeah, I think that's sadly <laughs> true. Sadly true. Yeah. I we all agree that. on that. Sad but true. Yeah. And and I and I think as you know, as part of SCARA, I think that's how I'm hearing some of the discussions. Um Good. that people are starting to realize that, you know, we need to we need to act now. Yeah. So I, I hopefully we're at that point. Um and my yeah. first my first selectman's response was that it would just draw rats from all over the place. Do you want a bunch of rats all over the place? That was one of my first phone calls. I was called the Pied Piper of Ratville. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of shuts down a con conversation, doesn't it? Um, I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> and so what kind of critters does um, <clears throat> organic waste attract? Um. It could uh, attract raccoons. Um, mm -hmm. There are rats. We have a river. We have the coast. We have um, Stonington did have a rat problem at one time. Not anymore. Um, How did you I, fix that? Um, I, I think a lot of it had to do with backyard chickens. Oh, People okay. leaving food out. Um, we did have a couple of, we did have a household that was um, feeding wild animals. And, oh, okay, but it wasn't from composting. It was... No, no, no. It was another. It was another problem. But Stonington residents remember that, and um, they they speak a lot about it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So you know, but as I said, that our buckets have a lid. Um, you know, we we have problems with seagulls and crows. Um, you know, you put your squirrels. Bag everything you know you put your yeah. back out at night the the birds peck at it and tear it all apart um but they do that with the yellow bags too so i think people are learning that you either put it out first thing in the morning at 6 30 where mr crandall's going to get to it fairly quickly or you put it out at night in a container okay. um common sense prevails mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. yeah. if if you live rurally and you know we <clears throat> certainly have our fair share of rural roads and if you live on one of them and you put a bag of food out on the curb at nine o'clock the night before chances are there's going to be an animal somewhere so um <laughs> you know that's that's, okay. that's what you have to do 
Mary Ellen? Did you, Mary Ellen, did you have a question? So oh. I do have a question. Yes, you mentioned that you were on the board of SCARA. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a representative on the board from every town that they serve or it's not? Yes. So that may be a very good contact if we want to do something, mm -hmm. for instance, in Ledger to find out who the alleged representative mm -hmm. is. Yeah, do you know who the East Lime is? Who the East Lime rep is? Um, I know Ledger is. Mm -hmm. I think I believe it's Steve Maslin for. Really? Okay, that's good. Uh, yep. Yeah, um, and what was it, East Lime? Yeah. Is that Joe Bagraw? Could be. I think. I know be. Joe. <laughs> See, yeah. I do he goes believe to it. her church. I Does do he go to your church? Okay. Yeah. I do believe Joe is. I think Joe is East Lime. But I think personal contact, if you know the people, sometimes at least it opens the door yeah. a crack. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take him to lunch, Kim. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as I said, I think the conversation as Gary is starting to move towards these. Um, innovative ideas of how we can reduce the, the amount of waste that we're sending out you know so none of stonington's waste gets landfilled everything is incinerated or recycled yes, um you know so that's good for us um but there are i think all the municipalities within scara i think it all goes to the incinerators mm -hmm. um but you know again ash is a problem and transportation costs and we're going to see the tipping fees go up. So, you know, first and foremost, we need to reduce the amount of trash that we generate. I mean, that's what we need to um, make that a priority. So Jill, if you have a list of the people from each town, that would be great if you could share that with Ann. Oh, I do. Sure. Thank you, Pam, either one of us. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. And are there any other towns in Connecticut that do the pay have unit pace based pricing or is is that unique to stonington um we were one of the first towns to implement it in the town of stonington um but there are i i believe there's 12 other towns oh. that received one of the sustainable material management grants so some towns are doing a a mini pilot food waste program where they're not offering curbside, but they have a dumpster at their transfer station. Uh, there's a couple of towns that are implementing a uh, let's try pay as you throw um, mm -hmm. in, in just okay. certain sections of their town. Um, so I think the grant monies, um, I think it helped a lot mm. um, to try to turn some of these towns around and, and you know, to see if we can get some of these programs to stick. Yeah. Okay. And are those grants completely done? They're not available anymore? This round. Yeah. Okay. So next year, what am I looking at? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're almost at the six o'clock point. Was there a last question there? I think it's a quick one. Yeah. Jill, okay. Now that this food recycling program is off the ground, like the plane is in the air, how tough is it to keep it going? It hasn't been tough at all. <laughs> to okay, keep it going. good. Yeah, the 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 one thing um I I want to do is um just to try to get more people on board. Mm -hmm. Um in our first few weeks, as I said, I've got over 7600 households um in our first few weeks and now we gave a bucket to everybody that we could possibly give one to. In the first few weeks, we were only getting a few hundred bags per week. Um, now we're almost to a thousand a week. Oh. Um, so as time goes on and I'm out there and I'm telling people, give it a try, um, giving them options of where to put their stinky buckets and what to do. <laughs> and everything. I think more people are like, you know, I'm giving it a try. I like the program. Um, on, on Facebook, I'm seeing a few residents are actually putting pictures of, I didn't put a yellow bag out this week because I have a green bag in my recycling and that was all. Um, so other people are like, you know, I'm going to give this a try. Um, so that's what we need to know. Uh, you know, I have a lofty goal of, I want to see like 5,000 bags a week, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and if I keep talking everywhere I can until people get sick of listening to me, then, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to push it and I'm going to see how much we can, we can, 
get out of it. Well, a thousand is a tenfold increase, so. <laughs> yeah, and it's still early. It's only been, you know, January 23rd was our first week. So, yeah. you know, some people are just now starting to, okay, I've opened up my bucket. This is a, just two days ago. I was like, okay, I've, I've opened up my bucket. Now what? You know, so. Um, and I'll gladly tell them and, and you know, and, and hope that they, you know, entertain the idea of just putting those food scraps in the bag. So, yeah, high hopes. Yeah. And I think you have a lot so, to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Very proud. Definitely. Thank you so much Congratulations, Jill, Thank for you. sharing your <laughs> stories about uh, Stonington success. I think... A lot of good ideas came up today and certainly a lot of food for thought for us. Yep. And I'll send that list out and you can uh, send emails to anybody. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, that's great. Fly, but that's great. And Jill, All you're right. giving a talk, a, an in-person talk, right? Coming I up. I am. <laughs> oh, where? Yes. Um, uh, it's going to be at the LaGrua Center in Stonington. Um, it's on May 17th at 6 p.m. Um, and it's just about everything here. The pay as you throw mm. program, textile recycling, the green bag program, what we can do, what's in, what's out, how to recycle properly, just everything. I'm just trying to get everybody the correct information so we can do things the right way and you know have non-contaminated recyclables and have people yes. give the green bag program a try and you know, and just get the word out and just keep, keep pounding the sidewalk, as they say. Yeah. Good job. Thank We're you so much. That was thank, thank you so you. much. Thank Jill. you. Thank you. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. And All right. Good night. Good night. Thank good you, night. Ian, for pulling us together. Yes. Yeah. Your health. This thank was you. great. Terrific. Thank great. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.